Hey there, everybody. I'm Jason the Cartoon Fan, and I hope you had a holly jolly Christmas. Longtime subscribers to this channel know that it's a tradition of mine to make a video about all the presents I got for Christmas annually, and this year will be no exception. I usually film and upload my Christmas presents videos on Christmas, but I ended up having to delay this year's installment to today, which for those of you who are watching this video after its uploading date, is Wednesday, December 30th, 2020. And coincidentally, the reason why I had to delay the video involves the first present I'm going to show you in this video. You may have noticed that the AV quality for this upload is a major step up from all of my previous videos on this channel. Well, that's because one of the gifts I got for Christmas was... A brand new phone! More specifically, I got an iPhone SE, which is what I'm using to film this video, and also what I'm going to be using for all of my future videos until it's time for me to replace this phone, which hopefully won't be for a very long time. The previous two phones I had were Androids, and although I got a pretty good life out of them both, I decided that it was finally time to join what some folks on the internet like to call the Apple Club, since I heard that iPhones are able to store four times as much data as an Android, which I seriously hope is true because the main reason why I've been holding off on making the merchandise videos I wrote scripts for back in August was because the storage space on my Android that I would have used for those videos was being eaten up by updates made to the apps I had on it. So I couldn't film those videos the way I wanted to unless I deleted a bunch of photos saved in my gallery, which I didn't want to do because most of them were irreplaceable photos of me with my family. Since I'm using it right now to record this video, I can't show you what my new phone looks like. But here is the box that it came in which has a picture of the front of the phone embossed on the front. Here is the side in case you wanted to see it. And the technical specifications as well as some legal information on the back. The inside of the box came with a charging cord, but my dad and stepmom, who the phone was a gift from, had to buy a wall plug for use with it separately. Here is what the wall plug looks like. And for those of you who wanted to see it, here is the box that it came in. The reason why I had to upload this video five days late is because my family was trying to transfer everything I had saved on my old phone over to the new one, but that process took a lot longer than we thought it would because it involved moving data from an Android over to an iPhone, rather than moving data from an older version of the same type of smartphone over to a newer version. And since my previous phone stopped supporting 4G LTE data as, well, not data, I mean 4G LTE, as soon as I got my new phone, I couldn't upload any videos on my channel until after the new phone started working properly. We finally got it functioning correctly last night, but it was too late at night for me to be able to upload this video then. I know I said in a post on my community tab that I was planning to make this video the day of the year I normally produce and upload my annual Christmas presents videos, so I apologize to all my diehard fans for getting your hopes up a little too high. Hopefully, 
you'll think that getting this video a few days after I intended to post it is at least better than having to wait for months, or in severe cases, even an entire year, to be able to see pieces of media whose release dates were changed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now that my hasty, rambling explanation on why this video got delayed is finished, it's time for me to show you all the other things I got for Christmas. I sp specifically told my relatives to go light on the amount of presents I would receive from them this year, since I already have a lot of stuff. But I still got some pretty cool gifts. First off, the, I'm going to show you a couple of things I got for Christmas that have connections to some of the stuff that I got for Christmas last year. Remember those Spongebob Hot Wheels cars I featured in my Christmas presents of 2019 video? Well, turns out that Hot Wheels released another series of Spongebob Hot Wheels cars. Well, blah, that was redundant. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, Hot Wheels released a new series of Spongebob cars, and I got the complete set of them from the same people who got them, the, the first series for me back in 2019, my dad and my stepmom. So unlike the first series, which was Hot Wheels' generic builds with Spongebob characters printed on them, this series are character cars. So basically, they made special unique designs that are sort of shaped like the characters that they represent. Hot Wheels has made quite a few character cars series series before. So Nearly all of the characters from the first series are also represented in this new series, with the only exception being Gary, who has been replaced with Sandy for this new series. Anyways, I might as well show you what the packaging for each of these look like. So, of course, we might as well start the, the this part of the video by showing you Spongebob because of course he's the main character the front pretty nice looking design for the car looks pretty neat and uh, here's the back complete with advertisements for all of the cars in the series including the ones I'm about to show you right now uh, there is a 2019 copyright date on the top of the legal information, but the bottom of the legal information has a 2020 copyright date. So I'm assuming that these came out this year. And that they were probably designed in 2019. Alright, so next off is uh, Patrick. Once again, pretty awesome design. Really like how angular this car is, is to match with uh, Patrick's triangle shape. Once again, pretty much the same info on the back. Okay, so uh, here is Squidward. Design for the car is as good as the design for the previous two. Same information on the back. And uh, all right, now we have uh, Mr. Eugene H. Krabs. And of course, in a SpongeBob series that has Eugene Krabs, there has to be uh, one featuring Sheldon G. Plankton. So, of course, uh, there is, and I have him. I like how this is the smallest of all the cars. Oh, and you can also see that Plankton's eye is printed on the window for the car, and then there's his evil smirk on the front. Definitely, probably the coolest looking of all 
the character cars that Hog Wheels released for SpongeBob. Though the other ones look pretty nice too. It's just that this one stands out from all the other ones. And last but not least, the character who took the place of Gary for this series, Sandy. All right. All right. The next thing I'm going to show you also has a connection to something that I got for Christmas last year. Though I'm pretty sure that this is going to be the last gift that has a connection to a previous Christmas present I got. All right. So I have a pair of Warner Brothers men's sleep jogger. So, uh, so you can see that the packaging has Fred Flintstone, Bugs Bunny, and uh, Scooby Doo, and this is this is really cool. I really like the design for this for these pants. So there, uh, so it has a uh, Scooby Doo, Tom and Jerry, uh, Shaggy, Fred, uh, Barney, and uh, Elmer Fudd and Dino. Uh, printed all across here. Oh wait, did I mention Bugs? I don't think I did, but he's on here too. Interestingly, they decided to use Bob Clampett and Tex Avery's design for Bugs, rather than the more well-known design for Bugs adopted by uh, Chuck Jones, which is how he's pictured on the packaging. St here is uh, a picture of what the joggers look like because I don't want to take the thing out of the box to show you what it looks like because well I kind of wanted to wear it and I just well you know it would be a little bit awkward so anyways the connection that these have to a Christmas gift I got last year was that um for Christmas last year I got a similar series like a similar kind of pajamas and they had like they have the same color codes on the packaging and it was for a uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. Well, um that one doesn't fit me anymore, so I gave it to my stepbrother Richard and I um dad got me this new pair of pajamas for featuring the classic cartoon characters that Warner Brothers has the rights to including uh, Looney T their in-house production, the Looney Tunes, and uh, Tom and Jerry, which was produced by MGM, and uh, a couple of the uh, classic Hanna-Barbera cartoons, more specifically for these pajamas, uh, Flintstones and Scooby-Doo, for me as a replacement for the SpongeBob pajamas. Overall, these look pretty cool. And uh, here is the back of the packaging, for those who want to see it. There's a 2020 copyright date on the back, so you can tell that these are new. And uh, yeah, this is really cool. I really like the design for these pajamas, and it is going to look really nice when I wear them. Since I showed those pajamas, I may as well show you the other cool pieces of attire featuring cartoon characters printed on them that I got for Christmas this year. So, this is a set of, gr of Grinch pajamas. Um, Dad and Janelle were the ones who got this for me. Janelle's being my stepmom. Um, pretty nice. I really like the picture on there of the Grinch with his usual evil grin along with Max who is looking happy-go-lucky as usual and then it says Merry Grinchmas which is definitely a nice touch and there's um the shirt comes with um a pair of pants with uh, green and white stripes pretty cool I really like this and um here is the back for those of you who wanted to see it copyright 2020 and it's from a company called uh richard leeds international which i'm assuming sp um, specializes in these kinds of pajamas and 
right over there, you can tell from the sticker that this was purchased at Walmart. So yeah, pretty nice. Finally, but um, definitely not, uh, okay, let me correct myself. Last but definitely not least for the pieces of cartoon clothing that I got, I have this Amphibia t-shirt. As many of you longtime subscribers to this channel know, I absolutely love Amphibia. It's not only my favorite Disney Channel cartoon that's currently producing new episodes, but it's also my favorite currently running modern cartoon. It's pretty much the only one that I've catched up on. Um, the other modern cartoons currently producing new episodes that I like are uh, The Owl House, The Animaniacs Reboot, and uh, Glitch Text. Um, there are a couple of other ones that I like. I mean, like uh, Big City Greens, I think that one is good. But the four shows I just mentioned are the only ones currently producing new episodes that I absolutely love. And um, definitely happy to have this shirt. Uh, oh, oh, hold on, let me get it so you can get a better look at it. So it has the Disney and Amphibia logos printed on the top. And then right at the bottom... We have Anne, Sprig, Polly, and Hop Hop. They all look like they're super excited about something because they have their hands up in the air and they're going like, ooh, wow. Definitely pretty nice looking shirt. Um, this one was uh, officially made by Disney themselves because you can see their logo and the uh, copyright information right over there. And then it has a little sticker attached to it. Here, let me peel this off. And uh, yeah, I'm, I clarified about this being an officially licensed Amphibia t-shirt because in a previous video, I got this really cool sweater of Anne that was designed for me. Like this is a fan-made piece of Amphibia clothing. And um, um D, um, DJ No Parking Barry was the one who drew this picture of Anne for me. And uh, the reason why I wanted this was because previously, Disney had some official Amphibia t-shirts, but they all had some pretty cheesy designs. But then they released this new one that actually looks decently designed. It looks, I mean, it's nothing spectacular looking, but it's a lot better made. I really like the colors and I really like the, the positions that each of the four main characters of the show are in. And uh, yeah, this is really cool. And for those of you who've been watching the show on the service, yeah, this image of the four of our main four characters are also the pictures of them that you see in the wallpaper for the show's page on Disney Plus. So definitely pretty cool. Really nice shirt. Um my mom who who lives over in Oregon was the one who got this for me. Okay, so I um let's move on to some junk food, I suppose. <laughs> okay, so in my stocking I got this candy cane filled with uh, gummy Krabby Patties, the signature candy for SpongeBob SquarePants, and probably the second most well-known piece of edible merchandise for the show behind only the SpongeBob ice cream bar from Popsicle. And uh, yeah, I don't really have much to say about it other than the sticker attached to the cane has um, Spongebob and Patrick wearing Santa hats because, of course, this is a Christmas-themed variant of the packaging. And the same thing applies with the picture of Spongebob that's on the wrapping for each of these. Um, they're pretty much the same candy that they've always been, so I don't really have much else to say about it other than, well, I love the candy, so it's definitely cool that I got some more of the Gummy Krabby Patties. Uh, my stepdad, Kurt, was the one who got this for me. All right, also from Janelle and Dad, uh, this really cool 
Peanuts Hot Chocolate Set. So you can see that there is a uh, hot cocoa mix for, uh, and then right below that is a really cool ceramic travel mug with Snoopy and Woodstock printed on it. So you could just make the hot chocolate and then pour it right into this cup. And I'm definitely gonna do that as soon as I'm done finishing uh, um, uh, this video. Sorry if I sound like a stuttering mess right now. It's just that I'm super excited to get my new phone. So it's kind of hard for me to be able to focus fully on remembering what I was trying to say on account of my autism. So sometimes I get a little bit overstimulated and you can kind of already tell that I'm already sounding a bit overstimulated right now. So um, I hope it isn't too big of a problem. But um, yeah, uh, let's see. Here's the back of the packaging. Here's a nice little bow on top. Uh, yeah, definitely pretty cool to have. All right, so now I'm going to show you what I have in these three bags over here. First, let's start off with this bag, which has some books that I got. Well, all of the books that I got for Christmas this year. In my stocking, I got two Archie comic book digests. Um, as I mentioned before in some of my previous videos, I absolutely love the classic Archie comic books. So I have a little collection of the digests as well as a couple of the regular size comic books in my collection. To me, there's no funnier comics out there than uh, classic Archie. And both of the comics have um, advertisements for uh, the uh, Archie spinoff TV series Riverdale on the back. Um, I've seen a little bit of Riverdale and I think it's good as a show on its own. But I think that it's a pretty poor representation of the Archie comic books. Since it's like a drama series and Archie is supposed to be a comedy. So, yeah... Um, opinion respected if you like Riverdale more than I do, but to me it just can't compete with classic Archie. I'm sorry, that's just my silly personal opinion. Okay, so the um, uh, Dad and Janelle were the ones who got these for me. Okay, next off is a gift that I received from my stepbrother Richard. Goosebumps Slappy World, My Friend Slappy, which is a brand new Goosebumps book that just got published very recently. I'm a diehard fan of Goosebumps, including the book series, the TV show, and the two movies. Though, admittingly, Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween was not as good as the original movie, in my opinion. So, I have quite a few of the books... And I also have a few episodes of the TV series on DVD, though I really wish that Fox would give that show a complete series collection, or at the very least, license the show off to Shout Factory. So, um, yeah, well, I read the book already. It's, it's fine. It's not one of the absolute best Night of Living Dummy style books, but it's not the worst one either. So, yeah, Richard, if you're watching this video, I just want to say thank you. Nice to have another Goosebumps book in my collection, especially one that's completely new. Okay, next off, I have the newest Diary of a Wimpy Kid book, The Deep End. Diary of a Wimpy Kid was my childhood. I had every single book in the series when I was younger, and I still think it's one of the funniest book series of all time. Though I do think that the more recent installments have kind of slipped in quality, though not severely enough to the point where I could consider it seasonal rot or anything like that. 
I also loved the live action movies, especially the original trilogy. And I'm super excited about the animated Diary of a Wimpy Kid film that's coming to Disney Plus next year. I'm definitely really excited about that one. Since it's going to be an adaptation of one of my all-time favorite Diary of a Wimpy Kid books, Cabin Fever. But anyways, you can see on my shelf that I have a pretty good amount of all the books in the Diary of a Wimpy Kid franchise. I don't have every single book in the series, but it's pretty close to the complete set. Um, I have... Well, I have all the books in the main series from The Last Draw all the way through Wrecking Ball. And now I have The Deep End, which is book number 15. And it came after Wrecking Ball to expand upon the collection. And uh, I also have a couple of the spinoff books like the Rowley Jefferson books and uh, the Wimpy Kid Movie Diary and Do It Yourself book. The only three books in the series I'm missing are uh, the original uh, Roger Rules and the sequel to the Wimpy Kid movie diary that they published a couple of years ago that was a guide to the um, long haul the most recent film in the series which I saw and while I don't think that it's the greatest film in the franchise I, d I also don't think it deserves the hate that it's gotten uh, I actually binged through all four Diary of Wimpy Kid movies on Disney Plus in preparation for when the new animated movie comes out on the service next year. So I definitely need to get those other books sometime in the future. But now I have Deep End to expand the collection and get it as close to being complete as it can be until I can get those other books. Yeah, I was just showing you what the other parts of the cover look like in case you wanted to see them. Complete with a little advertisement for all the other books in the series. Well, all the main books in the series, I should say, including the two in the main part of the franchise that I still need to get. I mean, I used to have copies of them, but I was foolish enough to get rid of them when I was younger and not as much of a completionist as I am now. Okay, this is a pretty nice little book. This is called Hanna-Barbera's Primetime Cartoons. It was an independently published book that is, as the name suggests, uh, an episode guide to all of the cartoons th from the 1960s that Hanna-Barbera produced specifically for primetime. The Flintstones, Top Cat, The Jetsons, Johnny Quest, and a show I never heard of before that was apparently an animation live-action hybrid called The New Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Uh, I didn't know that Top Cat was produced for primetime before I saw, like, I read this book all the way through. I always thought that it was for it was made for Saturday mornings because all of the other cartoons featuring Hanna Barbera's iconic animal characters like Yogi Bear, Huckleberry Hound, Quick Draw McGraw, and uh, what, what are some other ones? Uh, oh yeah, Wally Gator and a uh, Megilla Gorilla were made for Saturday mornings. So that's definitely interesting to know. And apparently the reason why Top Cat was canceled after only one season was because many children weren't allowed to watch it because they could only watch one cartoon at night before they had to do homework. And the show aired on Wednesday nights right after uh, the Alvin show, believe it or not. So the chipmunks kill Top Cat, basically. Alvin! <laughs> yeah, some pretty interesting stuff in here. Um, there's a little history for each of the cartoons that have their episode guides on there. And then there are the episode guides. Uh, pretty nice. This is all accurate as far as I know. And I'm definitely happy to have this because, um, it would be a good companion to the Flintstones' complete series Blu-ray that came out a few months ago when I get around to purchasing it. Since I uh, the Blu-ray doesn't have an actual episode guide. So I could use this as like a substitute if I really wanted to. 
Last but not least for the books I got, uh, Seussisms, which is basically just a collection of quotes from Dr. Seuss books that are combined together to create um, messages for each of, uh, uh, like, for you to learn. Um, it's pretty interesting, and, you know, it's just a little guide to life using Dr. Seuss's books as inspiration for them. And um, not one of the greatest things ever, but, you know, it's pretty cool for those of you who like that those kinds of books. Um, I was a really big Dr. Seuss fanatic when I was younger, so this is definitely a book of nostalgia for me. And, uh, yeah, nothing else much I can say about it. All right. So, um, the Dr. Seuss book and the Diary of Wimpy Kid Deep End I got from Janelle and Dad, and Kurt was the one who got me the Hanna-Barbera Primetime book. Okay, so, now that I'm done showing this stuff, now it's time for me to show you what's in this bag right here. First off, a special Q Fig Tunes plastic bust featuring Pinky and the Brain. Um, Q Fig Tunes is like a series of collectible, well, they're called figures, but I would really like to refer to them more as plastic busts since they don't actually move like traditional action figures. They have like a stationary position and it represents a specific scene from a popular movie or TV show. So really, they're more so statues, or the more correct term being busts, than um, actual action figures. So you can see that there's Brain with, it looks like he, come up with a, he came up with another great idea, and then Pinky's looking at him like, Gee, Brain, what are you doing right now? Pinky, what is it that I try to do every night since I've known you? Oh, uh, I don't know. Snoring loudly? <sighs> no, Pinky. I Wait, I snore? No, 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 wait, Brian. Uh, aren't you going to ask me if you're pondering what I'm pondering? <laughs> pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool to have. Um, Here is the other sides of the... Here are the other sides of the packaging for those of you who wanted to see them. Left side of the box, right side of the box, top, bottom, there is a 2017 copyright date right over there, along with an Amazon shipping sticker, and the back, which is just an image of what the bust looks like. It looks a lot more shiny and uh, detailed than it does here. Though it still looks fine enough on this box, it's just that it look, the colors vary a little bit from how it's depicted on the back of the box. Still pretty good though. Mom got this for me as well. Okay, next off, a really cool Hallmark keepsake ornament featuring the Roadrunner and good old wild Ethelberg Coyote. <laughs> yes, that's technically what his middle name is, though it was only ever used in a non-canon comic book story. So, my sister Sophia, who also lives over in Oregon, got this for me. I didn't know that Hallmark was still making keepsake ornaments, I mean, I know that they still make ornaments, just not their keepsake brand. So I'm definitely happy that they still do because they're sculpted really well. And they make they made ones for Looney Tunes. Besides this one, they also made a uh, one featuring Foghorn Leghorn and uh, Chicky Boo, whatever his name was, the little yellow bird who isn't Tweety, the one with the glasses. And they also made one for a Abominable Snow Rabbit featuring uh, Daffy, Bugs, and uh, George. Uh, those other ones were pretty cool, but I wanted this one the most because Y.O.E. Coyote and the Roadrunner, while they're not my favorite Looney Tunes characters, Daffy has that honor. 
their shorts are my favorite series of Looney Tunes shorts. And right over there, you can see that this was indeed made for 2020. Hallmark also released a keepsake ornament featuring the Warner siblings from Animaniacs this year. And I really wanted to get it. But um, I guess that it got discontinued because it cost $40 on Amazon while all the other ones cost around between uh, $15 and $20. So I assume that, the, that it got discontinued only a few weeks after it was released. Definitely happy to have this one though. This is definitely a keepsake. It, yeah, it lives up to its name. It, definitely a keepsake. Uh, let's see here, there's the bottom of the box, and then the back, which has a little description, a little bio, I should say, of the person who designed this, um, someone named Robert Chad, who apparently worked in the animation industry. Definitely pretty cool that someone who worked for cartoons designed an ornament of a cartoon. Okay. Next off, I have a uh, Steven Universe face mask. Kurt was the one who got this for me. Here, I'll open it up so you can see what it looks like. Right over here. So, the face mask has Steven, um, all three of the main members of the Crystal Gems, and Peridot riding a lion through what appears to be some sort of either like a mystical gem dimension or outer space. Either way, this is a pretty wickedly cool face mask. Really, it probably would have been even better if they put lapis on it, but that's just my crush on her talking. Still, it's really well designed. Um, it probably isn't, if, isn't official because the characters look a bit off model, but it's still super cool. And I really like how Lion has his, his eyes glowing. Definitely, per, yeah, definitely really nicely designed face mask. Okay, now I have uh, two Funko Pops. The first one is of Max as he appears in Goof Troop. Kurt got this one for me, and you can tell from the sticker that this was a GameStop exclusive. He purchased it online from a store that sells just Funko Pops. So it was a little bit more expensive because it was released exclusively at one store. But he told me that he was happy that I got it since he knows how much I love Goof Troop. I know this is an unpopular opinion, but Goof Troop is actually my second favorite Disney afternoon show of all time behind only the original DuckTales. And I think the reason why the show gets a lot of hate is just because it's a comedy while every other Disney afternoon show from around the same time was an adventure or fantasy show, which I think is a pretty stupid reason not to like this show. It really is good as a comedy. Here are the other sides of the box for those of you who wanted to see them. Max was unfortunately the only Goof Troop character that Funko released a pop of. It would have been cool if they also made a Funko Pop of PJ to go alongside him. And it also would have been nice if we got a Funko Pop of Goofy in his Goof Troop outfit with the orange sweatshirt and the blue bow tie. But we already have tons of Funko Pops of Goofy, so I don't, it's not something that I'm going to lose sleep over or anything like that. The second Funko Pop I got, which is still in its protective bubble wrap, is Gerald Joannison from Hey Arnold. Uh, I had the Funko Pop of Arnold, short man, for a pretty long time. So I figured, hey, why not also get Gerald? So I asked for it for Christmas, and Kurt got it for me. So, yeah. Now that I have Gerald. Helga is the only Hey Arnold character 
I still need to get the Funko Pop of in order to complete the set. Hopefully, Gerald didn't buy any ties for Christmas this year because, as Arnold knows, you only buy ties for Christmas when you don't actually know when you what people you're buying them for actually are into. All right, next off is this pretty cool E.T. Hot Wheels car. E.T. is one of my all-time favorite live-action movies. So I have a couple of pieces of merchandise for it. And uh, my dad was the one who got this for me from a custom website called Hot Wheels R Us. No relation to the late Toys R Us. And they it's a website designed to sell not just regular Hot Wheels, but their own custom designs. And... And I'm gonna I'm bringing this up right now because it's gonna be, play a big part in what I'm about to show you later in this video. All right. Oh, for those of you who wanted to see it, these are the little pieces of paper that came with the Hallmark ornament when Sophia got them for me, including this sweet little letter that she typed up for me. I love and miss you so much, Jason. Thank you for being such a kind, amazing, smart, and funny brother. Merry Christmas from Sophia. Aw, thanks, sis. Okay, so now it's time for me to show you what's in this bag right here. We're getting close to the end of this video, I promise. I know this is a much longer one than usual, that's just because I have a lot to say about this stuff. I have a second copy of the Steven Universe face mask Kurt got me, just in case the other one got lost, stolen, or ripped. Same packaging and design as last time, so I'm not going to bother opening it up. Um, a gingerbread Pez dispenser with um, a special sugar cookie flavor of the iconic candy. Um, this one is, is a little bit more generic than the other Pez dispensers I have, most of which are for cartoons, but it's still a nice one to have in my collection. I have a little collection of Pez dispensers. I might do a video on them sometime in the future. Um, let's see. I have a deck of Hey Arnold playing cards. Dad and Janelle got this for me at the Marshalls, which I find to be interesting because I found this exact same deck for sale at Hot Topic. So I find it super funny that something that would be sold at a place like Hot Topic would also be sold at somewhere like Marshalls. <laughs> I don't know. It just feels so weird since those brands are targeted to two toys totally different demographics. Um, two generic little Christmas activity books. Just some stuff that I can do while if I'm bored and don't have anything else to do. So it's nice to have some stuff to write in. And uh, let's see here. This is something that I know a lot of people are going to be excited I have. Uh, the Simpsons Testify, a whole lot more music from the original television, well, a whole lot more original music from the television series, because The Simpsons is the only TV series in its franchise. <laughs> so, um, a lot of people say that The Simpsons is no longer the masterpiece that it used to be, and I agree, but one thing that I'm definitely happy has not changed about the show is it's good taste in music. I'm a big fan of in-your-face orchestrated music, and The Simpsons fits that, like, The Simpsons' music fits that quota to a T. And I, it's really good, like, there's a really big Broadway vibe to the music that the show has. And even though the show's newer episodes aren't as good as the older ones, um, the show still puts out some really good music numbers whenever they have, like, a musical episode. 
Um, this is actually the third soundtrack album featuring music from The Simpsons. The first one, Songs in the Key of Springfield, was released in 1997. The second album, Go Simpsonic with the Simpsons, was released in 1999. And then in 2007, we got this album, The Simpsons Testify. The first two Simpsons soundtrack albums were released by Rhino, but this album was released by... Shout Factory? Huh, I didn't know that they made music albums prior to stumbling upon this CD at, um, I think it was FYE or Rasputin's, if I remember correctly. Either way, I'm definitely happy to have this album, just so my set of Simpsons soundtrack albums is now complete. Uh, there's some pretty good songs on here. I've listened to this album digitally, but I'm definitely happy to have a CD copy of it as well. And, um, yeah, there's nothing really much else I can say about it. Um, I don't really do CD unboxing videos, so I'm just going to open this up right now on camera. You can see that I haven't actually unwrapped this yet because I wanted to sh open it up in this video. <sighs> okay, I need to find something to open this up wet. <clears throat> all right, all right. I got it. There's a se stupid security tape on top. Oh, okay. there it is. I got it open. So here is the CD, which has um, a sandwich inside what looks like to be a gospel book. I'm assuming that it was Homer who put it in there because the artwork on the front cover has him holding a similar looking book with the sandwich poking out of it. And when you take the disc out of the holder, you can see it half eaten. Definitely a pretty cool little touch. And it matches with the packaging for the previous two Simpsons albums. Because um, Songs in the Key of Springfield's packaging had a disc shaped like a donut. With a little bit of grease underneath, like a little bit of a smear underneath to replicate a uh, donut crease. Of course, there isn't any actual grease in there, just a nice little touch they put in there. And uh, Ghost and Sonic with the Simpsons has a pack, what looks like, like from the top, you can see that it looks like the inside of a cup of Duff beer. And then right below, like the holder for the disc has um, a mud, like, I guess this is the mug when it's empty. Must be like a... What do you call them? Uh, I forgot. You know, those little wooden pieces that you put underneath the cups so you, the table won't get wet. So, yeah. So, yep. With this, I now have all three soundtrack albums for The Simpsons. Though not all the albums that were made for the show ever... Still need to get those two albums of original music. I mean, like, completely new music. Um, Simpsons Sing the Blues and uh, Yellow Album. And also the soundtrack for the Simpsons movie. But I do have all three albums featuring music from the show. Which is definitely really awesome. Um, back in 2000, Rhino made a box set featuring both of the Simpsons albums that they released on their own. But it would be pretty cool if we got a box set of all three albums together 
by most likely Walt Disney Records, since Disney, as you probably already know, owns the 20th Century Fox Library. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So, last but uh, definitely not least for the stuff that I got for Christmas. Remember I mentioned earlier that there was that website called Hog Wheels R Us that had custom cars that you could design? Well, Dad got me a whole bag of them. So, he made these special design, specially designed cars featuring a bunch of characters from the, uh, the main, like a bunch of the cartoons that I like for me. And uh, yeah, these are all really, really cool. So um, let me show you what each one of these look like. So the first one is a SpongeBob. And uh, let's see here. The second one is for uh, the Simpsons. The third one is uh, Looney Tunes. The fourth one is Amphibia, which I think is super cool. Hot Wheels and, um, and their um, sister brand, Matchbox, made toy cars for the other three shows. But since Amphibia is still relatively new, it doesn't have any toy cars, or as a matter of fact, the, any official toys right now. So this is definitely, the Amphibia one is definitely the coolest of them. And then... I might use this as my channel wallpaper in the near future to replace that long outdated garage band one. Uh, this is a Jason the Cartoon fan car featuring all four of the shows that I mentioned as well as uh, Animaniacs. Um, Looney Tunes, Spongebob, Simpsons, and Animaniacs are four of my all-time favorite cartoons. And Amphibia, as I mentioned earlier, is the modern cartoon currently producing new episodes that I'm into the most. So I'm definitely happy that I have an official, one-of-a-kind, Jason the Cartoon Fan Hot Wheels car. Dad, if you're watching this video, I just want to say thank you very much for designing these for me. I don't know what Deadpool is doing inside of this car, but it's still super cool. Okay. So that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and uh, make sure to comment about which present I got to, that you thought was the coolest. And make sure to stay tuned for tomorrow's video, which will be a separate unboxing video of the last thing that I got for Christmas. And for those of you who've been paying attention to my channel's community tab, you probably already know what it is. Yep, it's Steven Universe The Complete Collection. I got it for Christmas, guys and gals, and I'm definitely excited that I'm going to be able to do an unboxing of it. All right, until next time, this is Jason the Cartoon Fan, and I hope you guys all have a safe New Year's Eve and hopefully 2021 will be a major step up from 2020.